All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Samantha Stewart, who is in Northern California. How are you doing, Samantha? Hi, John. I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. And Samantha is a certified life coach. And what we're going to talk about today is growth mindset and business strategy. So let's get straight into it, Samantha. First of all, uh, def define what you mean by growth mindset. So growth mindset means that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have the idea of being flexible. So you know who you are, you know what your product is, you know what your service is, but you have the ability to to pivot, to think outside of the box, to not be so set in your ways that you can't be flexible. So you're going along, you're meeting with clients, and you're realizing that there's something missing. There's an additional pain point that needs to be hit. And you have the ability to start thinking about some other ideas or how you could even change your current process, your current programs. So that's what I'm really talking about when I'm talking about a growth mindset, John. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and then if, I mean, I guess the opposite of a growth mindset then is a limiting mindset. And I guess that's what you're talking about there if you just see things within a very narrow, confined context. Absolutely. I mean, my my belief is that we are all limited by our thoughts. So if you're thinking that this is the cap on where you can go in your life or where you can go in your business, you're correct. And if you think that cap is way up here, you're also correct. So it's your mindset that's going to determine the outcome of the trajectory of your life. Mm -hmm. And and I guess it's uh, for a lot of people they probably don't really know what their mindset is um, because you'd need to do a little bit of self-examination. So how do you start to look at uh, and analyze and assess like what kind of mindset do I actually have and, and, and how is it impacting my life? Uh, you're absolutely right. The very first place that you need to start is to have some self-awareness and a great tool for that is to um, to start journaling. If you can just literally just sit down and do what I call a brain dump, where you just write out stream of consciousness, whatever is in your mind, whatever thought thing, just write that out. Start there. It's going to take you a little bit of time to ultimately get to where you need to be or where you want to be to really have an idea of what's going on for you, who you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are, any underlying um, memories that are still running in the subconscious that potentially are limiting you in your life today, um, any stories that you're telling yourself, any any beliefs that you have about your capabilities. It could be something that somebody said to you along the way that was very nebulous, and yet somehow that stuck in the core of your mind, and it's something that's you know that's playing. And really, the way to access that is through journaling, is through meditation, is through giving yourself those opportunities to have time on your own and to really, really hear what's going on inside of you. And then the second step from that would be, okay, now I have all of this information. What in the world do I do with this? So at that point, if you're someone who has the skill set, you can continue on that path and really start to think about what are your priorities? Who is the person that I am becoming? Who is it that I want to be when I'm out there in the world? And you start thinking about how do I need to show up? What groups do I need to be in? Who are the people that I'm surrounding myself with? Do I need to make any changes there? If you don't have that skill set, that's the perfect time to look for a mentor or to hire a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I just want to uh, pick up on. So the first thing is uh, we live in a strange culture today. And I, I talk about this a lot on the podcast where we live in a in a shortcut culture where, uh, where everything is supposed to be easy. We're bombarded all the time. We're always distracted. We're always looking at devices and things. So so taking time out to actually do some self analysis is I mean, it's it's almost counterculture. 
and it, and it's and it's and it's hard for people. So how do you help people when you help people? How do you help people to actually create the space for this journey of, of self discovery? You're absolutely right. It's not only counterintuitive; it's counter culture for what we've always been told, the way that we need to do things. We need to run faster. We work, need to work harder. And if we do these things, we will become successful. And I think we're finally getting to the point where we're realizing that's not really true because I can work harder, but I can also burn myself out. I can also mm -hmm. cause myself to have health issues. So when I'm talking with people, typically what I'm first asking them is, Give me an idea of what your daily life looks like so that I can start to find pockets of time that they don't think they have or they're not able to see because they're running at that really fast pace. So it could be something as simple as, you know, hey, you've got a five minute walk down the hallway between this meeting and this meeting. What I want you to do is I want you to pop your, AirPod, your AirPods in and I want you to record whatever it is you're thinking at that time. And, and you can do that, you know, we'll find these little moments. And what that's doing is it's starting to create an opportunity in your thinking where you start to realize that you have the time. You just have to make different decisions in order to create more of those openings so that you can hear your thoughts, you can hear yourself think, you can pull yourself out of the rat race. If you're someone who's mindlessly scro scrolling on social media, which I know a lot of us do, you're, you're telling yourself, oh, this is a distraction. I'm decompressing. It's actually not. It's mm -hmm. not feeding you in a way that you're really looking for. So you're just compounding the issue. So if we can take what you're already doing in your day, let's say that you're someone who scrolls social media for an hour. Okay, well, let's take 10 minutes before you decide to hop on and do whatever it is you're doing on the social media, let's just take 10 minutes from that and let's start there. So baby steps, it's a process. You've got to start to train yourself and you have to start somewhere. And the most success I see with people that I work with is starting where they are, meet them exactly where they are. Don't mm -hmm. change anything distinctly in your life at that point, just start looking for these pockets of time so that you can start to build a habit slowly over time. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great advice. And I, and I think you're yeah, with the zombie scrolling, that's what they call it nowadays, where you're just mindlessly scrolling. Right. Um, um, they've also have they're doing studies now and uh, they see that uh, especially in young people like there's a dopamine release so it's almost like instead of instead of grabbing a, a coffee or something like they they just immediately go to scrolling through TikTok or whatever and and I think we have to become much more aware of our behaviors because people will say to me all the time saying I'm just busier than I've ever been and I always say well are you or are you more distracted than you've ever been because there's a difference between the two yeah, absolutely. There is a difference. And I think you're you're right. You're on to something by asking that question. Most people can't see that they're being distracted. Most people just see it as I'm busy. I'm constantly doing something. And really the way to think about that is what is it that I'm busy doing? And what is that creating? What is that doing for me? What's the return on investment of my time? Because there are two key measures that most of us think about. We think about money. We think about our time. And in terms of money, you know, you can always create opportunities to make more money. You can always go out and make more mm -hmm. money, but you cannot make more time. So if you start thinking about your time and the value of it and what you're trading it for, you do start to have a little bit more of an awareness and you can start to have the ability to see that you're you're going into a zombie like state and you're getting distracted. Now, if you're if you're very intentional when you go on something like social media um, because you're doing research or you're looking for your ideal clients and you have a strategy executing, I would still really question, do you need to spend as much time there as you're doing? You really, really want to hone in on what am I doing in my day? And do I need to be doing as much of that or are there as I could be doing that would be filling me up, giving me a better return on investment of my time, getting me closer to the goals that I've set for myself personally or professionally? So really just 
start having that inner dialogue, start having those conversations rather than just picking up the phone or picking up the tablet or scheduling in another meeting because you see you have a half an hour block of time available. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a great point as well. And I think the the key part there is the intentionality, because I think we do so many things on autopilot and that we're not aware of them. I mean, how often do you uh, do, do you end up on social media and then realize, oh, my goodness, look at the time. What have I been doing here? And uh, and so I think that's a really key takeaway point there is that whole idea of starting to be intentional, intentional and understanding and observing your own behaviors. Absolutely. Um, being able to observe yourself, it's having that opportunity to to break, to almost break that stream of consciousness, because I think so many people we've we've gotten into the habit right we've gotten into the habit so we're not even noticing this is just what we do we don't stop to ask well why do i do what i'm am i getting from this by putting my time and effort into this what else am i not able to do and really really just having the intention you know i really want people to think about what that word means so instead of doing something minor, instead of just I'm in this habit, you know, something from my business clients very often when I'm when I'm sort of poking around, well, why do you do this? And how can you use this structure? And why have you guys been doing it this way for 20 years? And very often CEOs will look at me and they'll say, because that's the way we've always done it. <laughs> and that in business, that phrase right mm -hmm. there can very well be the death of a business because you're not continuing to innovate. You're not continuing to, to ask questions. You're not being intentional. You're just sort of going on this track that you've always gone on and, and you're not really stopping to, to reflect. You're not stopping to ask, should we be continuing on this path? Are there changes that we should make here? You know, are we thinking about things in the right way? Just because this is the way that everybody else is going along, this is the direction that everyone else is going, doesn't necessarily mean it's the right direction for you or for your business. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's, I mean, that's, uh, can be scary for people sometimes, because if you're going to take the path less traveled, uh, you know, there's a reason you, you know, you'd probably think was well, a reason why everyone's going on that other path. I'm going to try this one instead. I mean, that's, that takes a little bit of uh, mental fortitude. Absolutely. The way that I think about that is, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're a creator, you're a creative type, very often when the world is going zag, you need to zig. So if mm -hmm. everybody else is going off in this direction and you find yourself caught up in the momentum of that, it's a very, very good idea to catch your breath, take a moment, put the brakes on and really step back and think about, is this the direction that I should be going? Is this the activity that I should be going? Because us creatives, we are the ones who are supposed to be setting the direction. We're supposed to be setting the mm -hmm. pace. So if we're going with the crowd, there's probably something wrong in what we're doing. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. One other thing that you mentioned earlier that I just wanted to come back on is the idea of people and the people that you surround yourself with. And I think this is a really, really difficult one for for many people because there you can probably find people around you who maybe you know aren't as encouraging when you come up with an idea they go oh, yeah but I don't think that's going to work and and you say okay oh, but they're always negative you have to ask yourself why do you continue to have that person around you and why do you continue to listen to that person they're serving some purpose for you you need to understand what that purpose is right now and and then uh, take action but rather than just say well they're a negative person you just say why do i feel the need to have them and why is it it's not their fault it's me i'm i'm they're serving some purpose for me and it's probably not a good one that is a an excellent way to look at that john you are you're dead on on that because a lot of times it's easier to look at the people around you and say what's wrong with them you know why mm -hmm. why are those people around me why are they not supporting my dream 
it's much more introspective and you'll get a whole lot more information if you ask yourself the question, why am I continuing to spend time with them? What is it that I'm getting from them? Or why do I feel the need to stay connected to them? And in some instances, it's because, well, you know, because we've been friends for our entire lives. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we be friends? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot maintain a friendship with them. It just means that you really want to give some thought to who you're spending your time with. And if you have a dream that's to create a business that is going to have $10 million in revenue and you're sitting only with people who are making $40,000 a year, mm -hmm. you really, really need to start thinking about how can I start getting into some of these other rooms? How can I start getting around some of these other people? Because right now I'm limited by the belief system of not just myself, but of those around me. Because when I share this dream with them, when I share this idea with them, they may not be able to see the path there and they're not they're not going to be able to support you in that. They're not going to be able to cheer you on. In fact, they may discourage you from that. And for some people, this is this is one of the more difficult pieces for them to make changes because you're you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going mm -hmm. to have to possibly spend less time with people that, you know, maybe you have kids together, maybe your families get together all the time, but you really have to think about what you're trying to build, what you're trying to create and who you need to spend time with. If you don't have the information and you you're saying to yourself, I need to find a mentor. Well, how are you going to create time to do that? If you're constantly hanging around people who aren't who don't have the ability to mentor you or don't have the ability to introduce you to people like that, you've got to go out and create that space or you've got to find that. And there can be a lot of discomfort in that. Yeah, no, I, I totally. And that's why I think, as you mentioned earlier, that's why I think having a, a coach or a mentor is incredibly important because uh, if you find, if you take a life coach like yourself, um, your only interest is in the success, is in my success, right? You're invested in my success. You have no other agenda. Whereas, let's face it, the people around you, they have their own agendas, rightly or wrongly. I mean, it doesn't, uh, it just it just is what it is. So having that independent person who has no agenda, who just cares about your success, that, that's got to be extremely liberating. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised that not more people uh, avail of that. It's, it's very interesting because you are you're engaging with someone whose sole purpose is to see you achieve the goals and the dreams that mm -hmm. you've set out for yourself you're absolutely right there is absolutely no other agenda and it's a very powerful person to have in your life it's somebody that's going to listen to your hopes and dreams that maybe you're not able to share with a single other person yeah. in your life because they don't understand, they don't get it, or maybe they'll, you know, they have other thoughts and other ideas. You're saying they have their own agendas. I think that, you know, in friendships, in relationships in general, whether it's a conscious thought or not, we all have our agendas. We absolutely yeah. do. We're constantly activating from that place. And we're constantly thinking about, oh, I know this person, I've got to make this introduction or, oh, wouldn't it be great to get the kids together? It'd be great to get the families together or, oh, there's a partnership waiting to happen. Whereas when you're working with a coach, there isn't any of that background conversation happening for them. They are specifically listening very intently to what you're saying and picking up on things that maybe even you yourself are not aware of and giving you the ability and the opportunity to start embrace to embrace other parts of yourself and to start to see those things and and to really have a space to create a space for yourself where you can start to have some of these conversations and you can start to ask some of these questions in a place where you're not going to be judged you are only going to be encouraged and you're working with someone who has the tools and the skill set to help you get to where you're saying you want to be? No, I, I, absolutely. And I think the I think the other thing, just last thing I, I would ask you about is to have a growth mindset. Right? It doesn't always mean 
I, I think some people think it means expanding and adding and everything all the time. But let's face it. I mean, if you look at, uh, I mean, it's spring going into summer now. What do you do? You prune things, you cut things back, and then they blossom and they bloom. And I think that's often where people don't understand that part of the journey is is pruning and reducing in order to flourish. Absolutely. Yes. Um, a lot of the things that we do in life that create success follow along similar cycles as nature. And so I love mm -hmm. that you're talking about what's happening currently right now with spring and how we sort of trim things and we we go into, you know, spring almost goes into a little bit of a hibernation period during the winter and then everything blooms and blossoms starting in the spring and then fully blooms in the summer. It's not dissimilar to what we need to do as human beings. There is a time where you need to pull back because you're learning a new skill set or you're really fine tuning a program or a product that you want to bring to the market. It's not just a thought you have and then wham, bam, all of a sudden you're on mm. the shelves of every target. Um, mm. It doesn't quite work at the, at the speed of light like that. There's definitely a process that needs to happen. And in having the growth mindset, that doesn't mean that you're always growing. Sometimes it means that you're actually scaling back. I was just, mm -hmm. I was just listening to um, Carolyn Aronson, who's the CEO and founder of It's a Ten, and she was talking about the fastest way to get to where you're going is to slow down, mm -hmm. and that's something that also is not talked a lot about in our culture today. That idea of in order to grow, in order to create. The momentum a lot of the time means that you have to slow down, you have to be intentional, you have to have the awareness, you have to create the space to give yourself the opportunity to hear your thoughts, to understand where you're coming from, to have the ability to ask the very powerful questions so that you can catapult into that next phase of your life. So it's very, very important in a growth mindset that you also have the ability when you need to, to take time off, to take a break, to reframe your mindset. If something's not working, you don't just continually pour more money into it and pour more manpower into it. You really have to take back and be able to reassess and redirect that effort and that energy. And that's a big part of the growth mindset as well. That's just not as talked about as much. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like that that old adage about what's it? More haste, less speed. Yes. So the more we run, more we run around frantically, the less actually pro uh, progress we're making. Hey, listen, Samantha, this has been fantastic. All of Samantha's information will be below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure, absolutely. So I am a master coach. I am CEO and founder of a company called SR equals S, which stands for soulful reality equals success. You can find me on Instagram at Samantha Stewart official. And my website is Samantha Stewart life. I currently have programs where I do one on one coaching. And I also have a group, a group program that's going to be launching in June. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.